So I want to talk about trolls and your interaction with trolls. You've probably interacted with trolls if you put comments on my videos or others. And I want to talk about them using this video. This is from the Icarus Project. I'm not, I wasn't familiar with the Icarus Project until recently. I've watched a few of the videos and I found them to be fairly well done. We're going to watch this video or at least part of this video and I'll comment on things along the way. Let's, let's see what we can see. I, this, this, um, there's a confluence here between what I know about trolls, what I've read about trolls, what I understand um, from pretty much every source that I've paid attention to and what he says. Let's listen. This is Tyler. He's a 38 year old white American male patriot living in Southern Texas. If you've ever watched a YouTube video about Russia, you've probably met Tyler in the comments section. His favorite hobbies include shooting his favorite gun, hunting, fishing, and these days, watching videos about the war in Ukraine that make him upset. Tyler is also a very passionate guy. He's upset that his politicians are sending billions of dollars to support a foreign war, and he isn't afraid to say so. He's also at least half convinced that Russia might actually be the good guys. And since he's so passionate, Tyler loves to share his point of view on social media, especially in YouTube comments, where he hopes to make a difference. Now, you probably met somebody that's like that, and let's keep going. You're going to understand why this is important. Play other people to his side. But there's just a few problems. For someone who claims to be a born and raised Texas patriot, with English as his first and only language, Tyler's English isn't actually very good. When writing his YouTube comments, he gets a few things consistently wrong, especially when attempting to use English articles, like the words the or A. For example, when expressing his displeasure about monetary support for Ukraine, Tyler might say, I don't know why we sending money to the Ukraine, when what he really means to say is, I don't know why we're sending money to Ukraine. Now, the article the before Ukraine I've heard before, but when you hear other bad grammar, that's often a sign that this isn't a real person and that you're dealing with some kind of bot or some kind of troll or something along those lines. And I, I see it and I, and they'll, they'll introduce themselves in similar ways. Hey, I served in the military and, and they'll go into th things like that, or I'm Ukrainian and, and they'll try to use some kind of cover, but then they say something or I'm from like Texas in this case, and then they can't get the English correct. It's usually a sign. And Tyler also likes to reinforce the fact that he is a American citizen when he's actually trying to communicate that he is an American citizen. Normally, such small language discrepancies are understandable, because English can be a very difficult language to master for a non-native speaker. But that's not what Tyler is claiming to be. And what's even more suspicious, Tyler also likes to frequently say, I don't support Russia, but before proceeding to repeat Russian talking points. By the way, I see that all the time. I don't support Russia, but, and then they go and negate exactly what, how they do support Russia. Word for word, showing that he does indeed support Russia, mm -hmm. but just doesn't want to admit it to his target audience. As for his active hours, Tyler likes to comment during the hours of 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. Pacific, the precise times when he should be asleep in his bed but when people in Moscow and St. Petersburg are wide awake. That's a pretty telltale sign. So look for that. Look for the timestamp of when things are commented on. And that's another good way to see whether they're actually a troll or whether they're in Texas. Working their 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. shifts. There's a simple reason for all these discrepancies. And if you haven't figured it out already, it's because Tyler isn't real. Aww. Sure. There's probably a version of Tyler somewhere that is real, and that version of Tyler could very well be a very nice guy, and is fully entitled to his own opinions, because Tyler lives in America, not Russia, after all. But not this Tyler. This Tyler is actually a 21-year-old Russian operative sitting in a secure building somewhere in St. Petersburg, working 12-hour shifts with strict quotas on the volume of YouTube comments he's required to produce every single day. 
And, and that is how these troll farms operate. And it was interesting that that when certain things happen, like when the Wagner mutiny or Freedom March or whatever it was, when that happened, the troll farm shut down. I saw my troll comments just fall like a rock. When uh, what happened in Gaza and Israel, when that happened, it shifted radically toward pro-Gaza sentiments and away from, like, I was like, Wow, there's very little participation here. Um, you know, the haters have gone away. What happened? You can see it. You can feel it if you if you're spending enough time out here. Unlike the real Tyler, this fake Tyler is in no way, shape, or form entitled to his own opinions. That's because fake Tyler is a Russian troll employed by the Kremlin to repeat official Russian talking points as if he were an American citizen. And this is hybrid warfare. That's what it is. There's there's the hot war. There's the information war. That's what we're talking about here. There's the political war, the economic war, and one is layered upon the other. So uh, you just got to understand that's what you're actually dealing with. And this Russian troll has created fake Tyler to adopt the persona of the American he feels is most likely to be influential in swaying real Americans to a point of view that benefits Russia the most. I speak! The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. Now get out of here. It's not such a bad gig. For a living in Russia, fake Tyler is paid quite well. According to some sources, he's paid better even than your average Russian doctor or teacher, despite fake Tyler's complete lack of education or professional training. And fake Tyler certainly earns far more, and is far safer, fighting on the front lines of Russian information warfare than he would be if he were fighting on the actual front lines of the actual well, war in sure. Ukraine as a real Russian soldier. The scariest part is that fake Tyler is not alone. This is just one of many personas adopted by this single Russian operative. And there are thousands of other operatives just like him on the Kremlin's payroll. As you'll learn today, Russia spends millions, perhaps even billions of dollars, funding trolls just like this to spread disinformation across every conceivable corner of the internet. And they wouldn't do it if it wasn't paying off. If they weren't seeing a return on their value, they would stop doing it. But they are seeing return. Creating fake social media accounts, fake news sites, or even fake comments on YouTube videos exactly like the one you're watching right now. Psst. Over here. In fact, if you're watching this video at least five minutes after it's been uploaded, chances are they're already there, lurking in the shadows, and you can go to the comments section to see the evidence for yourself. But if you don't see any yet, don't you worry. I'll be sharing some of their best work at different spots throughout this video. And while there will be plenty of time for jokes and games, there's also a more serious side to this that you should probably stick around to learn. Because while these trolls are generally pretty fun to play with, the truth is, they are not harmless. Mm -hmm. They serve a very dark, nefarious purpose. And while their impact may seem benign to people living on the other side of the planet from Russia's wars, the truth is, these Russian trolls are currently having a very real effect on everyday Americans and Europeans. From high energy prices, to uncertainty about inflation that could wipe out savings, to high interest rates leading to unaffordable real estate, global conflicts are currently contributing to the havoc taking place within Western economies. Internet trolls come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Some are more like pixies, just there to taunt anyone they come in contact with for a bit of fun and games. And by the way, when I see trolls like that, I don't engage. I mean, I, I understand that some of them are paid for responses and things along those lines. So I just leave them alone or maybe I give them a thumbs down or something. But I just I try to leave that alone. Other Internet trolls are more like the trolls from The Hobbit. Ravenous, angry beasts that will try to devour anything they come into contact with. But very vulnerable when exposed to just a tiny bit of sunlight. Most varieties of troll are frustrating, but ultimately usually harmless. But then there's the trolls you really have to worry about. A special variety that, unlike naturally occurring trolls, have been specifically engineered and manipulated into their present form. And you're sure to encounter this variety of troll anytime you consume content around your country's election season. Mm -hmm. Or, especially these days, content related to Russia 
in the war in Ukraine. So social media has weaponized the ability for trolls to impact you. It had, Before social media, this was not a, a, something they could easily do. And now there is a platform for them to be able to, to try to seep into your mind with a particular coherent message or even with a with mixed messages that cause you to not know what's going on. And it could do either of those two things. On the surface, they might seem like just your garden variety of native internet trolls. Wild, untamed beasts roaming the landscape that are easy enough to spot and avoid. But with this specially engineered variety of troll, you actually have to be a lot more careful. Because these trolls aren't just lone wolves wandering the wilds. They are scouts and servants of the Dark Emperor himself, created by him to roam the grounds outside his dark castle to taint the land in preparation for his coming arrival. Like this guy right here. The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. Now get out of here. The good news is, like trolls in fairy tales, a lot of them don't even know how to speak properly, so the majority of their target audience doesn't even understand them, wasting the Kremlin's precious money, like our friend, Fake Tyler. But other and I, I've seen a number of those, but they're fewer and further between. Most of them are hostile, and if you read enough Russian propaganda, you start to see the talking points almost in technicolor. Others are more effective. They play a critical role in dividing and confusing public opinion mm -hmm. to promote distraction or apathy when it comes to taking meaningful action against Russia, so that Russia can then proceed to do whatever they want in the global sphere with less interference than they would otherwise normally have like invading their neighbor and annexing 20% of their territory. We'll get to that. But first, let's start with an example that's certain to not cause any controversy at all. The 2016 and 2020 U.S. presidential elections. Between Donald Trump Hillary Clinton, and Joe Biden, respectively. These central events that caused Russian trolldom to rise to the level of public consciousness for the first time. Tonight, a look inside Russia's disinformation campaign. As Russia got caught red-handed, pun intended, intentionally seeding division into American politics. Now, were they trying to help Trump? Doesn't look like they were just trying to help Trump. They were trying to sow division. And you'll find this in uh, Putin's playbook. The, go look up that book on Amazon. It's a great book. Book, um, where th they're just as interested in supporting Black Lives Matter as the uh, white supremacists. And now, that doesn't sound like it would be a smart move, but if they can create the vision and keep us divided, they're more than happy to do exactly that. Resulting in several groundbreaking news reports and academic papers. If you're curious to check the sources. Russia's strategy involved playing both sides to help inflame controversial issues, so that the American people would turn against each other more fiercely than they already were, and lose Everything I know about this tells me that this is accurate and correct. Now, I could be wrong, but what I have read, what I have studied, this is confirming what I've already seen. Their focus on international affairs, causing them to largely not notice or care as Russia began its preparations for its invasion of Ukraine. If you were on the internet in the United States during those elections, or even observing from afar, you may have considered logging off for good, or only switching out of airplane mode to download the next level of Candy Crush. And nobody would have blamed you. It was a frustrating time to be an American or perhaps a humorous time to be a person watching Americans, and probably our nation's most divided point in history since the Civil War. Whatever side of the political spectrum you found yourself on, you probably remember at least one or more of these hot-button issues. Hillary Clinton's emails, Hunter Biden's laptop, Black Lives Matter, Colin Kaepernick taking a knee, and of course, arguably the most controversial of them all, the infamous jab debates. But what you may not remember, or may never have even heard, is that Russia was involved behind the scenes of the social media headache for all of them. And again, if they can use social media to amplify our divisions, that's what their intent was, and I think they've done it remarkably well. I, I think that's what's been happening. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't have an opinion about one of these issues one way or another. 
But what if Russia is trying to inflame one of these opinions? Far better if we can try to find some commonality between us than just call the other person across the aisle the devil. Hmm. We have proof. While Americans were busy arguing with each other and responding to Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton's latest tweet about today's new set of insane news reports, various less widely seen reports began to emerge that Russia had been spending tens of millions of dollars per year employing a specialized workforce in a secretive building at 55 Savushkina Street in St. Petersburg. Inside this secretive building, Russia was hoarding a massive army of professional internet trolls and their bread-and-butter expertise was manipulating social media algorithms. These trolls were trained to specifically identify potential hot-button issues in American politics, and then to work to make them go viral so that the Americans could do the rest of the hard work of arguing with each other for themselves. These characters were carefully crafted to transmit the Kremlin's thoughts to the public. Specifically how it worked. Do you hear that? To transmit the Kremlin's thoughts to the public. And again, if you spend enough time in... RT and TAS and Pravda, you will start to see these things. And then when a troll says basically talking points, it's it's pretty clear. The Russian trolls had a list of topics that they were intentionally looking to inflame, including things like race and gender, gun rights, and immigration. And they spent their working hours every day looking for, or sometimes manufacturing, emotional videos or news stories that could help these hot-button issues rise to the top of America's public consciousness. Once they found one, they would gather a critical mass of other trolls to like, comment, and share the content until it activated the respective algorithms and reached a point of no return. Again, it's weaponized social media and they're using it beautifully, masterfully, in order to sow division in the United States and elsewhere. As it was brought to a rolling boil in the public consciousness of the entire nation. The Russian trolls would then continue to stoke the flames and test out new ways to make the issue more divisive than it already was, usually by promoting extreme disinformation to both sides, or manufacturing false evidence. Then, once that topic began to die down, or Americans became so sick of it that they stopped checking their news feeds, Russia would rinse and repeat. Russia wasn't inventing division out of thin air. It was just throwing gasoline on the flames so that things would combust faster. Now, you see the same thing happening right now with Palestine and Israel. Russia is kind of taking up. If you look at RT right now, you'll see more about Gaza than you will about what's going on in Ukraine. And they're just trying to stoke that fire, not because they care about Palestinians, but because they're trying to um, just keep that thing going, keep the, uh, the attention over there as opposed to in Ukraine. And the strategy worked. American friends and families began to increasingly divide along party lines, Mm -hmm. and the ground was fertile for Russia to begin provoking international affairs without the need to fear a unified American response. So we're two weeks away from Thanksgiving, uh, as, as we're looking at this right now. What if, when you're at Thanksgiving and you can't stand a relative because of his positions on something along this line, Vladimir Putin was behind whatever you guys can't get along on? See, we got to stop with this. We got to actually search for places where we agree on things and work together on find common grounds, be kind to each other, those kind of things. Because what's happened on social media has been causing these divisions and it's intentional. And the trolls are causing us to hate people that we actually, people that we don't know. These trolls are causing us to hate people that we actually do know, people that we actually care for. And it's, it's very sad. Nobody was concerned about the bear waking up from its long hibernation because everybody was convinced that the donkey or the elephant in their own nation was a fierce lion in disguise. Russia became so brazen that they would even go on to interfere directly in the U.S. elections. And while whether or not that interference actually occurred is still considered controversial in America to this very day, it's a fact that the interference resulted in no less than 12 Russian military officers being placed on the FBI's most wanted list. 
wrap that around your head, right? I mean, there's something there. Now, that doesn't mean that they made Trump. It does mean that they were actively working, trying to create. I th I think this is my own working theory, is that they didn't think that they were making Trump. They thought that they were sowing discord for Hillary. Just imagine, I think they were as surprised that Trump won as they were, but they thought that they were creating an ungovernable time for Hillary, which turned out to be a pretty ungovernable time for Trump. So either way, they won. Which is pretty concrete evidence that something very suspicious actually took place. After all, no country risks starting a conflict by threatening to arrest another country's military officers unless they're reasonably sure that the conflict is already ongoing. Still, most Americans didn't hear anything about the Russian troll farms. Not because the reports and evidence didn't exist, but because they were so focused on the issues that were dividing them that they never stopped to consider their source. And speaking of sources, if you're a Russian troll, or this all sounds so crazy that your mind is already reaching for the old faithful comment of Russian trolls. Source, trust me bro. Let me assure you that source not trust me bro, but source, see description. The same as it is for every episode that I post on this channel. And that source is not my senile grandmother, or tomato sauce, or I made it the f up. It's from, oh, I don't know, sources like the New York Times, The Guardian, scholarly academic papers. Now, this guy won, my, won me over with this because they're, he's doing what I'm asking you to do and that's triangulate on sources in order to make sure that you're understanding things. Okay, I'm not going to play any more of that. I want you to think about this. I'll put the rest of the video link below so that you can watch the rest of the video. But this resonates with me because it's my experience and everything that I've researched about internet trolls. So, as far as I can tell, I'm recommending the Icarus Project. I've only watched a few videos, but I think that this is probably a good channel for you to be paying attention to. If, if I am wrong, I will correct myself later on. But for now, I, I'm going to give them a thumbs up. Thank you to the Icarus Project for that. And um, please, please, please consider what's going on with trolls and how they're interacting with you. And don't feed the trolls. Just kind of ignore them. Just go on your merry way. Add to a, a useful conversation that's helping us get where we're trying to go. Okay, that's all that I have. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, the comments. Real comments from real human beings, not these trolls. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.